In 2016, we bought a boat we aptly called Mood Swings, primarily as a platform to film our online fishing courses and the travel to remote fishing destinations. Our latest journey heading south was plagued by mechanical issues, but not to be deterred, we decided to head north after the repairs and put up with the challenges associated with monsoonal weather. Oh. Hi, I'm Ryan Moody, this is my wife Karen, our two sea dogs, my mate Maxie, and our fishing weapon from the blue boat. Join us on our northern adventure as we have a few dramas, see some amazing locations and catch some great fish. Heading north to Lizard Island and beyond. I was looking forward to an early start today so we could go for a fish and a snorkel on a nearby reef. But when trying to retrieve the anchor, we discovered we had an issue. And that goes back to... These things are easily troubleshooted, but it was great to have our own personal Sparky on board, so it was Maxie's time to shine. Uh, just trying to work out whether the solenoid has shit itself or whether we've got a broken wire somewhere to the anchor witch which I think the solenoid has shit itself but now we've got a mold emitter we'll find out can you go and try lucky we got a sparky on board up or down okay mate right I just went down does, does Maxie want me to go up 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 uh, we're just trying current flow either way because it's just the up function that's what we're trying to work through, is probably the relay switch. We need you to come here, Maxie, when we slip it and go over all the wiring. <laughs> now, this could break. Let's ex put an extender in here. This could break. Let's get a spare. This could break. I thought the things that could break, you'd sink the boat before you carry all the parts. <laughs> <laughs> That's just unfortunate. That's the awesome. anchor relay switch has died. It'll go up. It'll go down, but it won't go up. So Maxi, the Sparky, is going to reverse it until we can get a new relay switch flown in. So that down will be a free fall and up will be down, but down will be up. <laughs> so Down yeah. won't be a free fall, down will be up. <laughs> <laughs> free fall to go down and down will be up. Yeah, yeah a free fall to go down and oh, down yeah, will manually, be up. Manually on the front, yes. Yeah. I, know what I thought talking. you meant by the winch. <laughs> it doesn't do that. <laughs> okay, let's see how we go. Nothing. Down. Nothing. Let me have a dig in here. I'm pretty sure I don't. Relay, but it's been a while. Oh, we need a relay. Well, that would fix everything, wouldn't it, mate? Yeah. The... It still doesn't explain. Something. Like, can someone operate upstairs if we yell out? Of course. If I can show everyone yeah, this. Yeah, do you want me to go upstairs? Yeah. Just hold it on up until I say stop. <laughs> Please. Go up. Up. Nothing. Go down. Down. Nothing. F weird. What the f Don't get it. Weird. I don't know. Without getting that relay out and muck around with a 12 volts on a bench, I don't know. I can't see mm -hmm. how it wouldn't. Uh, we've just been juggling the switches, trying to put the thing that normally comes up on the down switch terminals, and that won't work either. We can short it to bring the winch up, but it'd be nice and easy if we could just reverse it. Uh, try that. Down. Yes, it's coming up. Beauty. Oh, f sorry, Maxie. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that I, I turned it off with the mains and I, I turned it off with the. It had me f why it wasn't working, that's why. <laughs> you can belt me on across the ears when we get out. Oh, sit there thinking, why the f did uh, that work? I turned the mains off <laughs> and I forgot to turn the breaker back on. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. You're all right, mate. F things. <laughs> hey, let me put this BP connector back on here. As long as it goes up. Yeah. So what do you need? A winch relay, what else? 
foot switch. And a helm switch. And a helm switch. I just think the relay is probably they're going to have it in stock. They usually, are, they usually do. Foot switches and helm switches they might have to order, but I don't want them to order it. I want them to just give us the real relay. Just give them whatever they've got. Yeah. Oh, I'm just ringing um, a few cans places to see if I can get this relay sent over. ASAP on the plane. I don't know how we're going to organise it, but anyway. I'm just calling on the sat phone from Lizard Island and we've lost our winch. So we need urgently a winch relay sent over to Lizard Island, uh, put on a plane. Do you guys do that? Uh, th three, it's a three pole, isn't it, Maxie? Yeah, three yeah, pole. Three yeah, three pole, yeah, 12 volts, 1600 watts, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, can you put that aside then? Um, and also, give me a spare foot switch as well for a, for a mule winch. If you, have you got those? Yep. Um, and helm switches. And uh, have you got any helm switches as well while you're at it, mate? Oh. Helm yeah, a mule, a mule helm switch. Uh, just put uh, two, yeah, to Ryan Moody Fishing, uh, Mood Swings, care of Lizard Island Resort. Okay, mate, thank you. I'll give, we'll give a call now. Thanks, mate. See ya. Thank you. Bye. All right, we need to repeat straight mm -hmm. away. One o'clock, they're open till. They can't take stuff to the airport, and they're only there's four of them in the week before Christmas. They're flat strapped. Just calling Lizard Island to find out what charter plane they use to um, so we know where to get our package delivered at the airport. Oh, hello. Uh, is, is that Lizard Island? Oh, hi. I'm um, on my sat phone. Our boat's broken down. And we're trying to get some parts delivered to the island. Um, I've got some staff flying out. So I know that you guys do operate a flight. And wondering if I can get something, a small box delivered to the airport. Uh, when I say box, a small part delivered to the airport for our vessel. Um, we are stuck here. Okay, well, if we get the parcel to East Air, um, then that w on Monday, then they can maybe bring it out for us and we'll collect it from the airport. All right, okay, fantastic. I'll call East Air, get it on a flight, and we'll come and collect it um, Tuesday or Wednesday. Thank you very much. Righto, bye. Okay, we've managed to get the winch going again, temporarily, only in one way though. So down is now up, and we have to release it manually when we want to drop it out. We've organised the part, it's coming from uh, Cairns on a flight next Tuesday. So we can operate like this for a few days. It's, it's, one, it's one of the only spares I don't have on board was another relay switch. I thought I did, but... I think I might have replaced that one about two years ago and just never got another one. Anyway, all these little gadgets and bits and pieces, it's what pays to have a spare of absolutely everything. Uh, we're going to head over to Martin K today for a bit of a look. Beautiful little spot, a bit of fishing over there as well. And uh, I don't know what the coral's like these days, it's been a long time since I've been there. It's got an awesome sand cave. Might do a little bit of top water. It's very well known for Trevally. We used to take a lot of fly fishermen there years ago. And um, catching uh, all sorts of pelagics. It's just outside of Green Zone. Eagle Island's the Green Zone, but Martin and Lint and the one below it are all open. So yeah, let's just get over there and have a look and have a great day before the Southeaster picks up tomorrow. We've got a big GT escorting us out of the Anchorage. There's quite a few of them around here because it's a green zone. They come up around your boat and want to feed. And we'll find that out tomorrow, especially in Watson's Bay where most of the boats anchor. There's all sorts of fish that come up for a bit of a hand feed. So we'll check them out uh, maybe late this afternoon or tomorrow when we go around there. Depends on when the southeaster actually starts.
Right, oh, we've made it to Martin Reef. Finally, got after some the, good phone reception. Got some good phone reception. Finished. Karen's finished all her calls. Well, I rang Pete. She can pick it up. And I rang Dean from East Air, and they are going to bring it over on Tuesday on the next flight. And I said, "What's the charge?" And he said, "There's no charge. We'll East fly Air. that over for you." Good lads. Because uh, I said we had a mechanical issue. So, mm. how wonderful is that? That doesn't happen every day that no. people fly you. You know, air freight. You know, no charge. So, mm. thank you very much, Dean. Appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to go stretch our legs on the uh, sand cave, give the dogs a bit of land and chuck the ball. Oh, I said the B word. Yep. <laughs> the ears pricked up. And Maxie and I are going to take the top water rods with us because sometimes you do see the odd GTs and that swimming around. Well, she nearly, oh no, it was a shark that nearly got her once when yeah. she was swimming around a sand cave. Mm. So uh, this is open. We're not in a green zone here. Green zone's to the north. Uh, so we're going to head over there. Then we're going to go for a fish. All right. Smart. Let's go. Yeah. One thing at a time. Right, let's do it. Top water was a bit slow with just a few small queenies cruising around. While it was great to get out and stretch the legs on a beautiful sand cave, I really wanted to get out jigging as I knew there were some good fish on some marks I'd found from last time we were here. And I wanted to beat those afternoon storms, so there's no time to waste. The start, however, didn't go to plan with a bull shark smashing me on the first drop and some pesky mackerel biting off our jigs. Well, I'm not getting this lure back, I don't think. I don't want to be mucking around too long. We've only got limited time today. <sighs> bloody sharks. Right, I lost a few lures. Got a bloody great bull shark eating me, a little pillager. He didn't eat it, a fish didn't get eaten first, but he just ate it as it was. A uh, couple of doggy mackerel have interfered with our jigs. Quite the start we're after. Let's see what happens next. All right, we're just going to keep on moving. Look at all the big schools and nannies. Oh, there's a couple of better fish there. They're the ones we're after. Okay, first drop down. A lot of bait down there. I think a lot of the fish are getting hidden in the bait. Okay, we've just moved to a new spot. Maxie's on straight up. Doesn't feel like a doggy mackerel this time, unless it's foul hooked, of course. Sometimes those sensitive rods will really feel like a trevally and it's actually a nanny. <laughs> I've fallen for it for a few times now. Certainly giving you a bit of stick. <laughs> I thought it was a doggy to start with because it was just shaking, sitting there shaking its head. Oh no! <laughs> Not to worry. Good fish though, good sport. This is what we call a Chinaman fish. That's their real name, it's not a nickname. It's actually called Chinaman fish. There's nothing racist about it. Definitely good fighters. Galloper is their nickname. You can see why. <laughs> All right. There we go. There he goes. He's got a bit of kick there. There he goes. Beautiful. Straight down. All right, eh? Let's go and try another spot. Pull the Storms are slow moving at the moment, which is good. A few more fish coming through. Oh, once again, these, all these little patches are covered in bait. And uh, some of them have got visible fish and others don't. But you have a jig and you still catch a couple of fish. There's reasons for that. It's in our sounder course. Okay, my turn. Oh, this one's pulling hard. Using my new Palmarius jig stick. 4-8 PE. New blanks into Australia. By my mate Ronnie Farron. Great little units. This might be another Trevally. We had a gold spot Trevally before for Maxi. 
Bit of all sorts under us there now. Look at the sound of Maxi. There's, oh, it's alive. It's alive. Okay, what do we got? Finally, got the good one. Nice eating size nanny. Maxi's just hooked up as well. A ton of fish sitting underneath us. There we go. Nice largemouth nanny. One of my favourites. Great eating fish. <laughs> Righto, kept that one for dinner. Not, an eat, not a bad eating size still. Not way too large. Maxie's just hooked up to a good one. Hopefully it'll be a nanny or a... Yeah, looking that way, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so much. Yeah. Oh, oh snapper. Oh, my, my, my mother-in-law. Uh, this is what we call a mother-in-law or a slaty brim. Type of mowong, painted mowong. Painted sweetly, I think. Paint, yeah, it. something. A few different names for them. Not very good eating, especially this size. So I'm just going to get that needle in straight away. See the air coming out there. Okay, off you go, big fella. All okay, right, head to another spot. See how we go there. Nice one, Maxi. Yeah. Hopefully not a slady this time. Well, it's resembling a nanny guy, mate. Let's just hope it is. <laughs> not a golden. <laughs> oh, I'm in the Berman King today. At least you're bending the rod more than me. <laughs> yes. Nice nanny, mate. Well done. All right, we might try and let him go, eh? Right, all. So we have, we've got plenty to eat. Let's get the hooks out and we'll get him done first. The barrack from a needle. Right, a very quick photograph after we vented him. Oh yeah, he wants to go. There he goes. Oh, look at that. Boom, straight to the bottom. Fun, mate. Gone in 20 seconds. Okay. They release very well if you vent them first. Okay, the wind's really starting to pick up. We've got some white caps really starting to form. Some big thunderstorms all around us. We've got to get back to the boat, get back to Lizard. Would have been nice to keep fishing out here a bit longer, but anyway, them's the brakes. I'll put people's safety first. So we've got to get back to uh, Lizard for some protection, because we don't know what's going to happen to Savi, whether these are going to come out of the coastline. Oh, Maxie's hooked up. One more fish, <laughs> and then we're gone. <laughs> uh, might be a mackerel. Might be a mackerel. <laughs> oh well, not to worry. Do us both a favour and get off. The worst things in the world, these, because you never know when that jig's going to come back at you. On that note. That's it. Right, oh, let's hit the road. When it's Man, <laughs> we had one little gust of wind. By the time we picked up the electric motor, we had 20, 20 knot gusts on us all the way back. <laughs> I could see you coming from a mile away, the oh. white, the white water. My. I'm like, our oh, boys are coming back. All right, let's get this out. I'm gonna try and go to Watson's Bay, eh? Yeah. yeah, there's a few cells around, hey? Yeah, well, I've been just sitting out there. They haven't really sucked in the the easterly yet, but well, they have now. I just hope that anchor hasn't gone sideways around anything from when we first pulled up. Oh. So I'll have to go around that way as I pull the anchor. Okay. Can you put the hook on? No, wait a minute. Don't touch it. When the boy wind picked up, the boat's changed direction and there must have been a little bit of coral in the sand hole and the chain wrapped around it. Anyway, that's them's the brakes. Get blown all over the shop here. It's, we're gonna make our way back to Lizard slowly. The storm's got me by the balls. I waited too late. I've seen you go out before. Anyway, it's all good. We'll make our way back slowly. 
Okay, we just made it into Watson's Bay. Copped a bit of a flogging coming back there with all that wind getting sucked into the storms. So anyway, we're in beautiful anchorage now. Hopefully the storms are gonna stay on the coast and they won't turn around and come into here tonight. I'm just gonna go through a bit of gear, a bit of a hectic session before. Had a big bull shark smash one of my pillages and it was starting to chop up a little bit. So instead of trying to deal with it out there, I just snapped it off. But trouble is, it's gone down in amongst all the other runs of braid, so got a little bit of knitting to do before I have a rum. <laughs> I think I need a rum after coming back to the boat and trying to get everybody on board and oh, that wind. The anchor went around the. Then the anchor went around a bloody bombing or something. I anchored in the sand. There might have been just a single rock or something there by itself. Because we swung around. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a nice little anchorage here tonight, and uh, we've got a southeasterly coming up. So we'll be spending a few days here, I imagine. And we've still got a bit of country out to the north of Lizard here outside the green zone we can drop a line down on. Uh, and if worse comes to worse, if it's too bad for the blue boat, we can just anchor that here, take the big one out and fish out of it. So um, have a couple of drinks in a minute and settle down and have dinner. Join us in the next episode where we continue on our offshore adventure. In the meantime, for fishing tips, workshops and fish planner tuition, visit our free training page at ryanmoodyfishing.com. There's a link to the gear and tackle we used on this trip below the video. And to follow along here for the rest of the trip, please like and subscribe and we will catch you in the